If you've ever had an evergreen or a cedar go completely brown and die off of you in the winter and you wrapped it in burlap, well, the science behind why that happens is actually quite interesting. And it turns out burlap actually may be working to your detriment and be maybe more harmful than a lot of other new methods out there that have been utilized and proven with science to work. So today's video, we're going to go through how to prevent winter kill in your evergreens, your cedars, anything that is exposed in above ground during this tumultuous time that is winter. So winter kill, shockingly enough, has nothing to do so much with the cold and a lot to do with desiccation and then obviously freeze, thaw, stress. And desiccation is desiccation. I'm literally referring to the wilting or the loss of water. We'll get into that here in a little bit more detail. Cedars and broadleaf evergreens keep needles all year, and these needles actually do respire in the wintertime when everything below ground is frozen. And that's the key there, is that when they're respiring above ground and the roots are too frozen to uptake any water, we end up with a plant that is slowly losing all the water, resulting in a wilted plant that we may not be able to physically see due to the anatomy of those plants. Now you combine that with wind and intense sun and it just begins to amplify. These plants can lose somewhere between 25 to 40 percent of their water just via this transpiration process. When we lose this moisture, we end up with a cell structure that begins to fall apart or collapse. And this collapsing cell structure in turn shows up in spring as a complete die-off of that branch or that area. So while you may not notice it now, it will, when things begin to come back to life, you will notice it because those cells have been completely destroyed. You combo that with a freeze-thaw cycle that is constantly breaking that cadmium layer up and also is ripping out the root hairs. And you end up with a season where the plant is really, truly struggling to uptake moisture through the roots while trying to combat the fact that it has a mass loss of foliage. And you kind of get the idea of how this could result in less than stellar results. So burlap was actually used in the 1900s to start with. And the reason we use burlap is because it provided a block or windbreak in air, not so much insulation. And this actually reduced one of the factors that helped with or contributed to desiccation, the wind. However, what can happen is if the burlap is wrapped too tightly, we can have the absolute opposite effect. The other thing is that burlap is a shade. So it will shade out the plant, which results in a plant that gets less photosynthesis and then therefore a weaker plant. University of Minnesota extension trials actually from 2020 to 2022, there was no statistical difference between wrapped in burlap versus non-wrapped in burlap cedars. So if you're going to go off of science and some trials that were done and and you don't want to waste your time and money, you could technically skip the burlap. So here are the smarter, more science-based alternatives. Number one is a windbreak. This can come in the form of an actual snow fence and a physical landscaping fabric, potentially other plants built around this space. You name it, literally anything that breaks up that wind and prevents it from smashing into the plants. If you can put it on the southwest side, this is the area most likely to get hit with those really cool winter winds or the stronger winter winds, I guess is probably the more correct way to say that. And it will reduce that desiccation drastically. You can also get anti-desiccant sprays. So you've probably seen these if you're big on indoor foliage, Christmas trees, garlands, that sort of thing. You can get anti-desiccant sprays. Well, those anti-desiccant sprays you can get for indoors also can work outdoors. And basically what it does is it puts a waxy film over top of the plant's leaves and that reduces the rates of water loss by basically clogging up those stomata. Eventually it does wear off, but it can help drastically in preserving the moisture. And this is something I would really encourage you to try. And if I forget to link one of the products down in Am from Amazon down below, let me know, I will do that. But essentially the reduction of water loss, particularly if you went through a really dry season and you were never really able to get a really good deep watering in before the freeze hit, it can make a big difference because your plant already doesn't have enough water to maybe make, make it through the entire winter. Next up, we have a hydration before freeze up. So if you're not in a position like I am where everything is completely frozen and you still have time to water, give those cedars 
and evergreens a really nice deep watering. And it can keep the soil warmer, actually, by three to four degrees, as well as obviously bulk of the plant moisturize so that the loss of 25 to 40 percent that's inevitable can be done with ease. Lastly, you want to make sure that you're mulching the soil as much as possible. This will allow for that plant to uptake the moisture until it officially freezes. And then at UV, depending on where you are, but potentially a UV shade cloth to reduce the intensity of the sun, which in turn will reduce the loss of water. This one I actually don't find incredibly beneficial where I am anyways, solely because it's not enough, the sun's not out long enough and it's not intense enough to really cause any issues in my opinion. But if it's something that you're noticing on your end, it's something to think about. Now, if you have had winter kill in the past and it's something that you're worried about, there are some things you can do to help the plant recover. Number one is actually leaving it initially in the spring. We don't want to start trimming back the dead brown parts in June because it can harm the cadmium layer. So we want to wait until a little bit later after all the new growth has finished and completed so that we don't interfere with that. And number two is to use a foliar spray. So if you're worried that you didn't mulch enough, maybe those root hairs got a lot of freeze-thaw stress, something you could consider is a foliar spray that has a wide range of micro and macronutrients that can make a big difference in helping that plant uptake nutrients that it needs for photosynthesis and growth and the production of new leaves in the spring. So I hope this explains why sometimes half of your cedar is completely dead. And it probably has to do with the fact that it's exposed to more sun and more wind, as well as why burlap is a kind of sort of way to work on it but there are better alternatives out there that can actually make a big difference without the stress that burlap causes by cutting off the sun. Anyways, Geek Korea, you have to let me know in the comments down below if you do anything with your above ground evergreens and cedars. I'd be interested to know. I personally do nothing. I have four cedars and they just live their best life in the snow, sun, and wind. Survival of the fittest over here. That's all I'm saying. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.